What is up guys, back in the garage. If you're here at the channel, you may have seen my brother's supercharged Celica GTS with the Blitz supercharger kit. These Blitz supercharger kits about 15 years ago could have sold for upwards of $7,000. And now they're getting crazy rare and they're still really expensive to buy. But here in front of me, I have the easily obtainable SC14 supercharger. And with it, I'm gonna attempt to make my own supercharger kit for my 2ZZ swapped MR2 Spider. So Lake's Blitz Supercharger Kit utilizes the Ogura TX-12 Supercharger. It makes about 8 PSI before valve lift kicks in. And then at that point, it drops down to about 6 PSI because of the extra flow through the head. And the Blitz Kit also runs a front mount intercooler and a custom intake manifold, which sole purpose is pretty much to make room for the supercharger itself. So whenever I say MR2 and supercharger, some of you might think of the first gen MR2s, which were actually pretty dope. And they came with an SC-12 supercharger on the 4A GZE engine that came in the car. The SC12 that came on the first gen MR2 is pretty comparable to the TX12 on the Blitz kit. Both made by Ogura. They both are discharging about 1160 cc's per revolution. This measurement is in air volume per revolution, so it's directly related to the amount of boost that the supercharger is going to make. So that was the SC12 I was talking about. This is the SC14, which came on a Toyota Previa minivan. And this SC14 is then pretty comparable to Agura's TX15, if we're looking at the, the curves on Agura's website. And we can see the TX15 actually pumps about 1460 cc's per revolution, which is a whole 300 cc's or almost 26% gain from the SC12. So currently as it says, if I'm comparing this SC14 to my brother's TX12 supercharger, the SC14 is gonna create a lot more boost at the same RPM. This is something I'm gonna have to remedy later by changing pulley diameters. And it's something I'll do later on down the road as I do some more calculations and figure out exactly what I need. There are some companies that make smaller pulleys or larger pulleys, depending on what you need. But I also, if you remember, have a lathe that I could possibly try to make something on if I wanna try out a little bit of an experiment. This way I can play with my pulley diameter and bring it down to the eight PSI range, which is I think where I wanna be. One difference between Lake's Blitz kit is that his TX12 kit comes with an electronic clutch activated pulley, where this SC14 actually just comes with a fixed pulley. For a daily driver, the clutch pulley is very nice. For just a weekend fun car, which the MR2 is gonna be, the fixed pulley should be just fine. Now, whenever it comes to buying something like this online, it can get a little bit sketchy, especially a supercharger where there's hundreds of eBay listings for the same refurbished supercharger with no reliable details about what engine they came off of or how many miles are on them. And I actually saw some pretty discouraging reviews on some of the eBay posts about how these superchargers came in refurbished and were super low quality and almost unusable. But whenever I saw good old reliable Amazon Prime two day shipping, I decided to give it a shot. I figured even if I got it and it wasn't like anything I expected, Amazon is super good with returns and I should be able to get my money back no problem. So sure enough, I ordered it and two days later, a refurbished supercharger showed up at my door. And let me tell you, this thing showed up very well packaged. The box was super sturdy. The styrofoam inside of it actually was molded to the shape of the supercharger. It was wrapped up in a nice plastic bag and this thing looked really nice. I can honestly say that I don't know if I would have been able to do a better job refurbishing this supercharger. It looked like all of the hardware was brand new, all the gaskets were resealed and the whole thing was repainted. Overall, I was extremely impressed with the refurbished state of this thing and honestly don't feel bad about putting it on my car as is without any extra touch up or painting or refurbishing. Now I say that based on physical appearance only without seeing the internals of this thing, which I probably could open it up further and inspect, but without seeing the internals with the condition of the rotors and the coatings on them, based on a quick look from the outside, it looks really good.
All right, so I got the MR2 pulled into the garage here. If you haven't seen the update video on my MR2, go check it out. It's currently 2ZZ swapped, but I want to do more to it. With the spiders, from what I've seen, it's very rare to install a supercharger without having to cut the firewall. This is because most of the kits actually mount on the intake side of the engine, which is the firewall side. So almost always the firewall has to be cut out in order to access it and for it to fit in there. It'd be a similar setup to a Lotus, but with the Lotus, the chassis is designed to fit around a supercharger or the supercharger is designed to fit in the chassis. I really wanna avoid cutting the firewall because even just the fact that you're completely altering the chassis at that point, you're also eating into the very minimal storage space that is behind the seats. So my goal with this supercharger is to make a kit that can bolt right up with no cutting of the firewall or engine removal at all. The spot that stands out to me right away is right on this back side of the engine on the exhaust side where it can line up right with the belt. I thought about possibly mounting it right on the top of the engine, but then you'd get into clearance issues with the hood and also with the belt coming up over the valve cover. So as of right now, I'm thinking this is the spot right down low here. The main issues I see with this location, first one is the length of the pipe that is gonna have to run the whole way to the throttle body. I'm not extremely worried about this because with a supercharger, you don't have the same lag that you'd have with a turbo. So the charge pipe length doesn't really matter as long as you have a large enough diameter because the superchargers, the boost is instant since it's pushing a certain amount of air at a certain amount of rpm as soon as the engine starts spinning you're going to be pushing air and creating boost the biggest issue currently is that i don't even think the supercharger will fit with the current exhaust manifold that's on there you can see that the exhaust manifold comes out and straight down which actually leaves just enough space that this thing might be able to fit in here but i think i'm gonna to have to come up with another solution this spot i think is the best because the belt path actually lines up perfect where i can stick the pulley out on the supercharger and it can line right up with the belt path. Whereas in other locations, it might be tough to get that to work. The other main issue is that the supercharger right now would be extremely close to the exhaust manifold. Obviously a heat shield could help with this, make something to go in between and block the heat from getting to the supercharger. But I think I may go a step further with it and get a little crazy with it. So in the MR2 update video, I was talking about how I wanted to fab up a custom exhaust and how I was just running a swap eBay header and that the whole rest of the exhaust was just kind of thrown together quickly. Long story short, I would love to weld up a nice, pretty stainless steel exhaust for this thing. And this seems like the perfect opportunity. The current plan is to fab up my own header that will shoot up and over to get the heat as far away from the supercharger as possible. It'll shoot somewhere over in this direction and you can see it'll create a bunch of clearance between the header and the supercharger. And then if I'm still worried about the heat at that point, I can still make a heat shield to go in between just for peace of mind. It'll just be a fun project to weld up. It'll also just be fun to make a custom piece that will hopefully serve a purpose on the heat management side of things. For engine management, my brother's running an AEM piggyback. He was able to make this work and tune it himself, but to make my life easier and based on his recommendation, I'm gonna try to find an Apexi Power FC standalone that way I can have full control over the engine and it should just be a plug and play unit. So as I mentioned before, the MR2 is the next big project on the channel. In the last video, if you watched that, you saw the RX-8 is officially on the ground and driving under its own power. Although there's still plenty of work ahead on it, I can now move the MR2 to the back of the garage for more of a permanent solution to work on it. So it's gonna be up on jack stands for a while. So if you have any other cool ideas to do to it while it's up in the air and I'm working on the thing, please let me know. I'm open to suggestions to make this channel more entertaining and give you guys lots of MR2 content. So if you have any suggestions, please drop them below and let me know what you wanna see. So anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're as excited as I am for this MR2 build. And as always, it helps if you leave a like, you leave a comment, you subscribe and have a good night.